Welcome to e Padasala. Today we will discuss the topic types of savings and investments, concept of family life cycle. First we will see the introduction. The first contact for every individual in this world is, is his family. This individual finds relaxation, opportunity for self-expression and happy group living while living in a home as a member of the family. The family is the most important part of the man's environment. Man, along with this heredity, lives in midst of a three-dimensional environment, namely natural, human, and technological. There is a continuous interaction between the individual and his environment throughout his life. So, it is important to examine and understand the structure of the family in the modern setting. In order to form the background for the study of management problems, a family encounters in the use of resources at the various stages of life cycle. Among the resources, money is one of the important resource. Effective money management involves decisions to be made in the manner so as to keep aside certain amount of money from the present income for future consumption. Thus, savings and investment form an important component of the family budget. In this module, we will discuss types of savings and investment, concept of concept stage recent trends of family life cycle and management of resources. Objectives of this study is the requirement and availability of resources at various stages of family life cycle to understand the individual's life and the changing pattern of family life to reduce economic insecurity especially in old stage, help in period of physical inability, useful during an emergency. Then we will see the types of saving and investment. The term savings means refraining from spending for concepts and needs. Saving is very important from the national point of view. Savings are directly proportional to investment. Savings can be defined as abstinence from present consumption for the purpose of future consumption. So the formula of saving is savings is equal to income minus expenditure. Then types of savings. The important types of savings are provident fund scheme, post office savings, banks, deposit accounts, life insurance schemes, public provident fund and unit trust of India. Saving can be categorized into compulsory savings and voluntary savings. Compulsory savings are those that individual and institutions are compelled to make in order to satisfy permanent regulations. The provident fund schemes and pension fund schemes are the most familiar ones. First we will discuss the provident fund. The provident fund scheme is the plan for providing a lump sum benefit at the time of retirement or death. In case of death, the family members nominated gets the amount. Under this scheme, the employee contributes monthly a certain percentage of his income, usually 10% and the employer contributes matching amount. The employee can even borrow money against the sum accumulated up to a certain percentage for a specific type of expenditure such as marriage or building a house. The money is recovered in the limited number of installments. The pension scheme is different from the provident fund in that the amount is paid as lump sum but paid each month after retirement. The rate of pension depends upon the basic pay last drawn by the employee at the time of retirement. Apart from pension and provident fund, a third type of retirement benefit available is gratuity. Under this, employees of certain organizations or institutions get a lump sum, usually one to five times of lost patron at the end of their service or death after a specified minimum period of service, usually 10 or 15 years. The employees does not contribute anything towards gratuity. Then second is post office savings. There are one of the oldest savings institutions in the country having been established over 150 years ago. Savings in post office are safe since the amounts are guaranteed by the state. Further, post office offer also facilitate of making cumulative time deposit and recurring deposit. Cumulative time deposits is a fixed amount paid into the post office saving banks every month for a period of 10 years and accumulated principal and interest is paid at the end. Recurring deposits can be taken for 5 years or even for the periods. The next saving is banks. The object of nationalization was to enable the banks to open branches in rural areas and also to see that the credit facilities were offered the small man in business, industries and agriculture. Banks earn interest on credits but in order to have sufficient fund they must tap the resources of the people. 
by opening savings bank account families can earn some interest about 5% per annum while at the same time able to withdraw the money as and when they want then deposit accounts deposit accounts are intended for amounts that one does not need immediately this means that provisions has been made for emergency fund insurance etc and foreseen expenditure in the immediate future fixed deposit amounts a lump sum is left in the account for the period 12 months or more on opening a fixed deposit the depositor receives a certificate from the bank containing details of the account the amount deposited the duration of the deposit the date of maturity and the rate of interest the interest is higher if the period of the deposit is also higher then we will see the life insurance schemes insurance is kind of protection protection against financial losses for instance when we send goods by train we may insure them if they are of considerable value in that case in the insurance company will reimburse our loss in case of goods happens to be stolen or destroyed and never reach the destination this type of insurance is known as general insurance as against general insurance life insurance is for protecting a person or his family against loss of income because of the death of insured person in general there are two types of policies term insurance and whole life insurance term insurance is also known as temporary insurance the period of time may range from 3 months to 7 years the premium is payable throughout the term of the policy and the beneficiary will be paid the face value of the policy only if the ins- insured dies during the period of the policy straight life insurance this is an insurance for whole life that is insured amount is payable to the beneficiary only on the death of policy holder and the premium though lower than in the other type of insurance has to be paid throughout the lifetime of insured family protection is the predominant motive for this plan then we will see the public provident fund this is the facility offered by the government of india through the state bank of india so that even individuals who do not come under the provident fund scheme the contribution and interest paid is free of tax withdrawal and loan facilities are available then unit trust of india this is an organization that invests the money if receives from people in various companies especially large well run companies make profit unit trust offers a safe way for such people to invest their money in companies individuals can buy units from the unit trust and then investment family uh, investment is usually defined as a person of placing family funds in a more or less permanent form with the expectation of assuring the security of principal and receiving a regular predictable return from it types of investment first one is ownership investment here the investor's role is the that of an owner or part owner when the money is invested on land or in some business the capital purchased takes the form of material assets money gets converted into house or equipment from which income can be got by the way of rent and profit in the case of business since many material assets increase the value over a period of time this appreciation means a gain in capital then second one is credit and investment a person lending money does not become the owner of whatever the money is being utilized to acquire the creditor's role in this case is passive unlike in the first case where he becomes owner or part owner creditors are and borrowers need not be only persons even corporations of cities and state and central government raise money to meet their expense through borrowing in such a case the government issue bonds A bond is a contract or a credit instrument between the lender that is creditor and the debtor that is borrower. Investor buys a bond of a corporation or government. He is lending money to the corporation or government. A bond is a fixed return investment. The amount of interest the investor receives stays the same for the life of the bond. The next is stocks and shares. Stocks and shares are the means through which the individuals can become part owner of the companies. shares have the nominal value that is uh, rupees 10 or rupees 50 or rupees 100 or any other convenient round sum decided by the company but their market value can change from day to day depending on the profitability of the company and the popularity which the company enjoys among the investing public there are different kind of shares but the major distinction is between common stocks and preferred shares and preferred stocks the preferred shares entitle the owner to receive dividends before the owner of the common shares 
Likewise, when company goes bankrupt, its preferred shareholders will receive preference over the others. The difference between bonds and shares are as follows. Shares, the investor's role is active as he is owner or part owner. But in bonds, investor's role is passive, he is just a creditor of the company. Then second one is, the shares certificate is certificate of ownership, risk is more, there is no maturity date. Here, the bond is a credit instrument, risk is less as more protection is offered. The third one is, return is in the form of profit or dividend. Here, the, there is the maturity date as bonds are issued for the specific period of as 5 years, return is in the form of interest. Then some principles involved in investment that is safety of principle, income yield or rate of return, ease of management marketability or liquidity, then maturity date. The next is concept of family life cycle. Each family passes through the cycle that begins with the marriage of two young persons, grows with the arrival of children and then again becomes the home of two persons when the children marry and leave their homes. Thus, the family starts with the two relatively young persons, grows normally into large group of assorted ages and finally returns to the group to older persons. Though there may be some difference between the families, each family goes through similar stages in their life history. These stages tend to overlap each other in most families. For example, in the family where there are more than two children, one child might continue to grow with new arrivals and the eldest child might get arrived and leave the home. In this manner, this family expands and contracts at the same time. However, the family faces clearly defined situations along with the problems typical to the stage. Then we will see the importance of recognizing the family life cycle. Understanding the concept of family life cycle is a valuable guide and in realizing and meeting the managerial problems of family life for a young couple who constitute a family after marriage. The importance of recognizing the family life cycle of the family lies in the opportunity it provides to the family of two young inexperienced couple to look ahead and to purchase the family needs and wants which may be expected to arise during each stage. However, demands on the other's resources such as time, energy, abilities, skills and material goods would also be felt as the family grows with the arrival of children the family life cycle is predicted. In general, the family life cycle is divided as suggested by Gross and Grandal into three major stages, usually called stage 1 is the beginning family, stage 2 is the expanding family, stage 3 is the contracting family. Nickel and Darcy also suggest similar division of family life cycle that is this divided into family stage and sub stage. In beginning stage, sub stage is period of establishment. Then second stage of expanding, the sub stage is child bearing and preschool, elementary school, high school and college. Then the final stage of contracting is vocational adjustment of children, financial recovery and retirement. As is evident from the figure, it is important that the young couple realize the extra demand that are likely to arise after the arrival of the children. Though in the beginning, the personal income and other resources available may be found to be adequate, the additional demands which are likely to arise in the future during the second stage. Thus, it enables the family to plan for the future at the time when the flow of resources may be found to be inadequate as compared to the demands arising with the arrival of the children in the family. However, the income might once again become adequate when the children grow and take up gainful employment and contribute to the family's finances. At the end of the life cycle, reduced earning power of the breadwinner lead to inadequate earnings. Such may be the case when he or she retires from the service either with no income or a pension which may be much below the actual salary of the persons. The next is recent trends in family life cycle. It has been observed that many changes have taken place in the family life cycle in the past. It has been seen that both the typical length of the major stages in the cycle and the length of the entire cycle varies significantly. The reason for these changes are emergence of nuclear families, choice for a small families, increased longevity of the family members due to improved medical facilities and an enhanced awareness among the people. Late marriage on account of emphasis on women education and employment.
Due to these reasons, possible changes that arises in the family life cycle are as follows. The child bearing stage becomes somewhat shorter. The marriage of lost child comes later. The wife and the husband have longer time together after the marriage of their children. In India, as a tradition, children were married at an early age even before they attained adulthood. It was also seen that the parents were taken care of by their children. However, in the recent years, a different trend has set in the families. The children leave the home of their parents and set up the home independently. With the result, the retired parents are left alone in their homes to take care of themselves. In the case where one partner dies, the other partner who is left alone sometimes has to take shelter in the old age homes. Thus, the last stage that is the contrasting stage becomes longer and there is a need to open up more old age homes and the couple is expected to save enough to meet the demands of their long periods. So next is impact of recent changes in the family systems on the households. Industrialization and trend towards the service economy have produced four major changes for the individual and their families. The first stage is dispersion. Family members shared work on small farms or in business in the past. The hours of working might have been long but in the entire family shared in the responsibility in the protection process. Nowadays, wage earners may not spend as many hours in earning a living as they did before. This dispersion of family members make time for them in developing interpersonal relationships outside the homes. The second stage is mobility. Families in the Easter years were confined mostly to their hometowns. As producers of their own consumption products, they stayed in one place. There was less of mobility in physical terms. However, in the industry season and an account of other social changes, families started to move from one place to another. Most of the family members changed their residence either at the end of time of marriage or within a year of after marriage. However, the mobility rate was gradual. Producer to consumer. Families have become consumers rather than only material producers. Products can be purchased in ready to use form for immediate consumption or in the partially prepared convenience form to be completed as and when needs arises. This has leads to and overall changes in the family system. Then small families. The joint family system flourished in the day of the past when agriculture and the trade in the village were in sound position. But today with the establishment of new factories in urban areas, the families started moving towards cities where they have become economically independent. Technological advancements have also changed the living style of the families. In small families, there are fewer hands to perform the household chores. Modern technology has also changed the family's organization, relations and functions in many ways. Then, recent changes in family life. It is more men and women get married at later age. More families have two or less than two children. More persons live to their complete family life cycles. More women work outside the home. Families have moved off farms or rural areas and into cities and suburbs. Families have shifted from production to consumption. Families have more resources, especially the material ones. Family members have more lesser and higher education. Family roles have changed. Family instability has increased. Individual family members have more freedoms. Then, finally, management of resources during family life cycle. The analysis of family life cycle revealed that the family has to pause a number of major substages which are likely to have their own and typical demand on family resources. Among the various resources available to the family, the significance of some important resources like money, time and energy are felt more than the others as their availability affect the determined and availability of the rest. Therefore, management of money, time and energy resources are discussed earlier than the discussion on the different stages of family life cycle. Then first one is money. Money is an important family resource for its significant role in family resource management. Money resource, otherwise known as income, starts relatively low in the young family, larger in the latter years. The increase in income reaches and maintains its greatest level for as long as the husband and the wife are in employment. It starts dropping with the retirement of one of them and dwindles further when the second member also retires. There may be a difference in the use of income among two families and similar size stages of the family life cycle 
and other housing conditions. The irrespective use of money vary on account of age of homemakers that is young ones are less informed. Advertisements influencing young ones more than the older homemakers. Knowledge and experience in handling family finance. The second most important resource is time. Time av availability is limited to 24 hours a day for everyone but the demand on that may be less or equal to or <coughs> greater than that can be made. For the beginning family that is in stage 1 the demand on time is low for both gainfully employed and non gainfully employed. The couple is busy in setting up the house and establishing the family. They may spend more time on household activities because either they are inexperienced or they have more time to set up the house. The family in stage 2 brings in higher demands for the time with the arrival of the first child. Care of the child takes away most of the time of the homemaker besides trying to find time to shop for meeting the needs of the child. With the arrival of the second child, the time demands increases till the time the children grown up and become independent. In stage 3rd, the mother finds more time for herself as the children leave their home. She might spend the extra time on taking up vacations or on doing social services. In joint families, she may be required to take care of her grandchildren while the men may spend their time on lesser time activities like playing golf for bridge after their retirement from active employment pursuits. Like time and money, energy is also an important resource. Unlike the other source, the flow of energy gives an interesting picture. Amount of energy flow and its demand follow in different courses. The supply of energy usually decreases as life advances. The demand upon its during stage 1, light, heavy during stage 2 and reduces once again stage 3. This will once again vary among the gainfully employed and the full time homemaker. Though the demand is light in stage 1, it increases in stage 2 where the supply of energy is found to be inadequate. Both frustration and physiological fatigue is common at this stage. In stage 3, a great change occurs with the diminution of potential energy. This is likely to upset some women though the demands on energy may also come down. Then finally we will see the conclusion. The family is, is a socially recognized unit of people united together by marriage and legal ties. It consists of two or mere more people who are economically and emotionally interdependent on one another by residing under the same roof. Since management of resources is primarily concerned with the sudden and use of resources in daily living, the acquisition and use of resources by the family will also be affected by social group. When a family identified is ma managerial responsibilities in the house, it is in position to develop its own own conceptual framework of the managerial process. By doing so, the family is able to improve its resources to enhance the quality of living and therefore increases satisfaction of its members. Thank you.